Hey I'm Max and today I'll make a little video on the basics of using C++ in Unreal Engine 5. Just a little note before we start, I will not be explaining the basics of C++ itself, like variables and functions, but simply how to use them in Unreal Engine. If you don't know C++, you should learn that first. I will also not explain the blueprint part of things. If you don't know how blueprints work, I have made a beginner tutorial for that too. You might also be wondering why anyone would use C++ instead of Blueprint, because Blueprint is a lot more simple. The answer is simple too, it's speed. Code running in C++ is always going to be faster than Blueprint. If you have a lot of actors running code multiple times per second in Blueprint, it will quickly lag. If you do it in C++, it will take a lot more actors before it starts to lag. C++ code is also cleaner and easier to edit and debug in my opinion. Anyway, let's get started because it's going to be a long one. <laughs> okay, so the first step if you want to create a C++ project is when you create your project and you select your template, in this case I'm going to use the first person, you can see here to the right project defaults, blueprint or C++. This will determine whether the template stuff like the character is going to be made in blueprint or C++, but even if you create a blueprint project, you can still create C++ class inside of them. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to create a C++ project. So by clicking C++ here, I'm going to have the template content, like the character, shooting, sound and everything inside of the C++ code instead of inside of Blueprint. Once you've created your project, you will see that the game is working, you can hit play, you can move around with your character and pick up the gun, and you can also shoot. But you can see if I open my content drawer and open my first person character Blueprint, and I open the full Blueprint, you can see that there is absolutely nothing in the event graph or anywhere else on the blueprint. So if there is no behavior on the blueprint, how can we move and shoot and everything? Well, that's because we created our project in C++, so the logic is in C++. When you create your project in C++, it should open Visual Studio automatically. If not, you can click here, edit in C++, and it should open it. So if I click edit in C++, it opens my Visual Studio on the class. But in this case, I don't want to change the character class because that's an engine class. You don't want to edit engine classes. Instead, you want to go in your source, then your project name, and you should have projectile, game mode, character, and everything else. If we open the character header, we can see inside a U class for a character that derives from a character, which is the engine class. We have inside of it a skeletal mesh and a camera. We also have a bunch of functions like on primary action, move forward. Then if we open the CPP class, we can see inside of it our constructor where we can set the capsule size, the turn rate and other things that we need to set on our character. And the constructor is always going to run when you open the game or the editor, not when the game starts. So keep that in mind if you do some things in here like get world or set the time of the day or things like that, it's not going to work because the game is not running yet when this is run. You don't want any sort of game logic in here. Instead, you want to put the game logic in the begin play, which is exactly the same as in the event graph when you do begin play and you do game logic when the game starts. But this video is supposed to be about the basics, so I'm not going to go over all of this. This is way too complicated for the basics. I'm just going to make a simple class and struct to show you kind of the basics of how they work. So if you want to create a new class, you just have to open your content drawer, go into your C++ classes, then any folder you want, right click and click new CPP class. Then you want to choose a parent class, you can choose for example none, a character, a pound, an actor, or if you want you can go into all classes and there you can select a custom class you made for example. To start off I want to show you the structs because they're quite useful if you want to have something like data but you don't want to create an actor for it. So I'm just going to click none and then next, then you can put a name for it, I'm just going to call it my struct and hit create class. It will automatically create it and compile the project. This is done using live coding which is actually quite a useful tool that allows you to recompile the code using Control alt f11 while in game or in the editor without having to restart your old project. However, keep in mind that this sometimes can cause some problems, such as if you add a new variable or a new function. It can create bugs, so I usually restart my old project whenever I change something major, but if you just change a little something, you can use live coding. 
So you can close this and if you go into your Visual Studio, you can see you can reload everything. So usually whenever you create a class or a struct, you will have your API linked here. But I actually found that if you don't put it, it usually works anyway. But I mean, put it just in case. Okay, so the first thing we will do is change the class to struct because I want to show how to make a struct first. However, keep in mind that in Unreal Engine, you cannot have functions in your structs. So first, let's create a simple normal C++ struct. So I'm just going to add a variable. Let's just do int health equals 10. Or if you prefer, you can use your constructor. So instead of putting equals 10 here, you can go into your constructor and do health equals 10. So this is just normal C++. As I said, I'm not going to explain the C++ aspect, but how to use it in Unreal Engine. So if we save this and then we go in Unreal Engine, we can hit Control Alt F11 to recompile our code using live coding. Like I said, this can cause issues sometimes, but usually it should work. Now that our code has recompiled, if I go into my blueprint and I try to create a variable, let's say struct, here I can click on the boolean and try to change it for my struct. But as you can see, it's not here. And that's because we need to use Unreal Engine specifiers to show that this is a struct that we will use in Unreal Engine. So if we open up the documentation for the struct specifiers, we can see there are a lot of them, but we actually only need this one here. Blueprint type expose this struct as a type that can be used for variables in blueprints. So if we copy that, we simply have to go into our Visual Studio and above the struct, we simply have to put use struct and then parentheses and we put our blueprint type here. Make sure when you use macros like this of Unreal Engine, it might be confusing at first, but you should not. In fact, you have to not put a semicolon at the end. If you do, it will mess everything up. Now, if we save this and try to recompile in Unreal Engine, I don't know if it will work. Okay, so we actually got a build failed and it's because I made a mistake. When you create a struct in Unreal Engine, the name of the struct always has to start with F. When you make a class, it has to start with U. And when you make an actor, it has to start with A. So since this is a struct, I'm going to put a F, capital F, in front of my struct name and also my constructor and destructor. Now I got another error, no include found for the dot generated file. And this is something else that you always have to take into account when you make a class or a struct for Unreal Engine. If I go look at my character, you can see at the top here of the class, you have generate body. And at the bottom of the includes, we have the tutorial character dot generated dot h included. And that's just something that Unreal Engine uses. I'm not exactly sure what it's for, but it really needs it. I guess it's sort of to set up the class or the struct for Unreal Engine uses. So here we can copy generate body. As I said, with the macros of Unreal Engine, we don't put a semicolon at the end. And then at the bottom of the include, we can simply type include, then the name of our file. So my struct dot generated dot h. Okay, so it says it works. So now let's try to change our boolean into a my struct. And as you can see, my struct now shows up. So by adding a generated body, a use struct blueprint type at the top, and our include generated, and also changing our name to start with F, we managed to turn our struct into a Unreal Engine struct. That was a lot of steps, but don't be too afraid because most of the time you won't create a bare class like this. You will start with a base like an actor, and this is already done for you if you do that. So now if I go into my event graph and I go for example with the event begin play, I can try to use my struct and print the value of my health variable. But you can see if I try to drag and go health, it's not there and usually a struct you can do split struct spin or you can type break and break the struct into its different variables. But you can see no matter what I do, I cannot get that health variable. And that's because you guessed it probably you need to put something above the variable. When it comes to variable, it is called a property inside of Unreal Engine and you have a bunch of tags for it. You can see things like blueprint read only, so blueprint can only read the value but not change it. Read write, so it can read and write it. And there are some other useful ones like visible anywhere and edit anywhere that allows you to edit this variable anywhere, including inside of the defaults. So in our case for a struct, we will use blueprint read write, so we can copy this. 
and then above our variables we go u property then parentheses and we put our blueprint read write as usual no semicolons then we can save go into unreal engine and recompile it says the live coding succeeded and if i try to drag and go health it doesn't work if i try to go break it doesn't work again and you can set it up here taking live coding my struct is zero and here it says live coding so as i said live coding when you change major things in the class often doesn't work so you need to restart the whole project so now that i restarted my project i can compile again using live coding and then i can create my variable my struct again i can drag it in and now i should be able to break my struct like this and get my health value so now that i got my health value i can do for example a print string and print my health value. If I compile and run this, you will see that my blueprint is able to get my value from my struct of 10 and print it at the top. So now if I hit play on begin play, it gets my struct value and prints the value. You can see also if we try to edit the default value of our struct, we cannot see anything. If we change the U property of health and add edit anywhere like this, it will allow us to edit the defaults as well. So if we save this and recompile, you can see I got a live coding again. So live coding can be good, but you get a lot of errors when you change key structures inside of your class. If you are making big changes to one of your structs or classes, you probably don't want to use live coding. So in this case, you can go into your main menu, click the little thing at the bottom right, the three dots, and check off enable live coding. Then whenever you change something major, you simply have to close your engine, Go into your Visual Studio and hit Generate, Generate the Solution. This will compile your project and then you can hit the play to try it out. Or you can directly hit play and it will compile and then run it. So you can see now I added Edit Anywhere. Now I can hit my play and it will run Unreal Engine directly from Visual Studio. So you can see now I disabled live coding and I ran my Unreal Engine project from Visual Studio. I can see all of the data like the RAM and the processor used and I can put breakpoints to stop it wherever I want to check values or whatever. Now, if I go back into my project, you can see my struct is gone again. So that's why live coding is not very good. Let's create it again. So I'm just going to call it my struct and the type is going to be my struct too. And you can see now if I click on my variable, since I put edit anywhere, I can now open it up and change the health value. And you can see also, since we put our health equals 10 in the constructor, like I said, it runs with the editor, not when you start the game. So the health equals 10 is put as a default value into my blueprint. But I can still change it to whatever I want. So let's say I put it to 99. So you can see now that my health is 99 inside my blueprint. I can hit play and it will print 99. If I change it to something higher, compile, I run it again and it's now the new value. So it's the same as if I put my value into the blueprint directly, but since I created it inside my C++, I can now use it inside my C++ classes. So if I need to, let's say, remove one health every tick, if I do that into blueprint, every tick remove one health is going to get very laggy because blueprint is not as fast. But now I can do it inside C++, which is much faster. I think it's also good to know if you go into your project folders, you can go into your content and see all of your blueprints, but you can also go into your source and then you can see all of your classes. So now that we've seen the basics of the struct, let's create a new class, none again, and this time let's make a simple class instead of a struct. 